It's the boss. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hey. Hi. Welcome to the Berlin Open Stage Show. I am one of your hosts here, Trevor Silverstein. I'm uh, another one of the hosts, Stanton Rionson. And uh, we are uh, in quarantine, as we mentioned in the previous episodes. We are not live in front of a st- an audience at the Comedy Cafe Berlin, and we are not together in the studio. Yeah, Berlin Open Stage Show is a bit of a misnomer. I think all of those words are false. Most of all, show, probably. Uh, because uh, there's no show. It's only tell. It's only the audio. Uh, there's no <laughs> exactly. place to actually They're- watch them. That was so, I like the way you put that, Sander. There is no show, there's only tell. Yes. That's very wise. I've been reading uh, a lot of screenplay books recently. Yeah, good. Uh, we Well, but, but I'm happy to say, and, and uh, we touched on this in our previous episode, that we are going to keep the show going, and this is so exciting. And we have a great show for everyone today. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. So even if we're all uh, uh, in separate places, the show can't go on. We are able to have a new sign-up format so we can have people sign up every week to take over the feed, so to speak, with their podcasts. And we have a real doozy this week. Yeah, so this week we have a returning host, uh, someone who hosted an episode in our second season uh, called A Prepper Home Companion. And, uh, and and he's a great country folk radio DJ named Harrison Feeler, not to be confused with anyone you might know named Garrison Keeler, I've been no, told to say. No, not at all. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he's quarantined at home and he's going to be talking to a couple uh, individuals uh, that he's friends with and giving us an update on the disease. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy a proper home companion. This world has made you sad Some people can be bad Things they do, the things they say But baby, I'll wipe away those bitter tears I'll chase away those restless fears Turn your blue skies into gray. They were at the top of Kissin' Point Why and just looking over the view that Kissin' Point offers all the residents of Lake Nuclear over Lake Nuclear itself. And Jim and Mary were sitting there holding hands. And of course, they're each holding each other's opposite hands, the, the, not the right hands that, that you're meant to hold when you're, you're shaking hands or anything, because unfortunately, uh, the nuclear waste is uh, creating all kinds of unfortunate uh, d- deformities, and 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 but they they're still in love. That's the important part: is that the Jim and Mary are looking at each other and they're staring out over at the horizon, and they're thinking to each other, "Well, gee golly, aren't I as lucky as heck that I'm experiencing this beautiful sunset with my loved one on another night here in Lake Nuclear." And well, folks, this is another story from Lake Nuclear, and I'm your host, Harrison Feeler. I'm uh, broadcasting to you on another episode here of A Prepper Home Companion on the Berlin Open Stage Show. So it's good to be back here in these very try and try and quarantine trying times. And uh, I hate to say it right off the bat, but it looks as though preparation has been uh, of the utmost beneficial nature to me. Uh, I am, of course, a doomsday prepper, and this whole show is about doomsday prepping indeed. And here I am in the, the safety of my own home, broadcasting just like any other day, bringing you good, folksy, family-friendly stories of the apocalypse so that y'all can be comforted while you're now at home quarantining yourselves, going out only once a week for your cans of beans. Well, I will hate to tell you, but... It ain't so bad, is it? So anyway, we've got a great show for you here. And like I said before, I am Harrison Feeler. I have no relation to Garrison Keeler, who is a sexual deviant and host of A Prairie Home Companion. This is not that show. 
And anyway, this show is a lot more informative and important in times like these, and I'm joined by some very important guests who I will now introduce to y'all. And let me start off by inviting a good friend of mine. This is a, a Nobel laureate, someone who is uh, someone who's very important in the world of science right now, and I want to thank you for coming on my show, Professor Donatella Vegetables. You're an epidemiologist, is that correct? Professor Donatella Vegetables, are you there? Hello, yes, hello. hello. Okay, yeah, thank you for chiming in. I was worried for a moment there that we lost you in these trying times when you don't hear from someone. You only can imagine the worst, and I don't mean to scare folks out there because this is a family-friendly show, and we're not trying to be fear mongers like the the news media out there. Of course, a fear monger and everything. Uh, so it's good to have you, Professor Dotted Tele Vegetables, and we'll come back to you for more. Thanks for chiming in, and uh, we're gonna you. we're gonna move on over to another guest, and you might recognize the sound of this person's voice. This person, I hesitate to say, because it it's possible that they're not a person at all. F. W. Parkinson, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, man. How you how you doing, man? Oh, uh, it's good to hear the sound of your voice, F. W. Uh, I, I was worried say, it's about nice you. Nice to hear your voice. Nice to hear your voice, man. I'm bummed out by the quarantine. I think like everybody else. Not how I planned it. You know, uh, we're yeah, not how you. Nothing's how you planned it, but you can be planning all the time, is what I like to say. Yeah, that's, man. That's my this catchphrase. Is, this is one one bummer of a quarantine, my guy. Yeah, well, we'll come back to you for more. We got a lot to catch up on, I'm sure. And uh, last but not least, a good friend of the Berlin Open Stage Show. You probably have heard her before, and she's uh, been on her own episodes that she hosted, as well as another one from a good friend of ours, Court Masters, if it's none other than Ruth Hader Sandberg. Ruth Hader Sandberg, how are you doing? Hi, y'all. How y'all doing tonight? Uh, we're uh, but, uh, Speaking for myself, I'm doing quite fine. I've got myself here a nice cup of hot French roasted cup of joe, and I'm not a big fan of the French roast, if you know what I mean, but uh, I like my <laughs> cups of joe. And uh, anyway, now that we're all here, we can really start to talk about what the heck is going on out there in the world, right? You know, we've got a pandemic going on, coronavirus, COVID-19. It's taken over everywhere. I mean, there ain't, there ain't nowhere this this uh, virus ain't. So, well, uh, that's not quite true. I can tell okay, you that, Harrison. Well, I, because, uh, uh, I was going to go, uh, Ruth, I was going to go one by one, but we'll start with you, I guess, because you're, well, you have you're, to, you have to. Well, as you know, I am a, I'm Ruth Hader Sandberg. I'm a conspiracy theory debunker, which means that I take conspiracy theories and I disprove them using my, my logic and all the knowledge I've gathered throughout my years. Uh, I am, of course, now in Area 51, uh, Safe from all those uh, little virus creatures uh, roaming around there on the Earth's surface. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of misconceptions about Area 51. Some people would have you believe uh, that uh, a spacecraft landed there in uh, 1960, what have you. And the government has been hiding these people to uh, preserve the truth somehow uh, that these aliens are out there. Now, I think it is incentuous and preposterous and glamorous to say that uh, these aliens are being kept for us because uh, there are some uh, dangers to them. Did now, you just say it's glamorous? It is glamorous, and I will tell you why. Because what, it, what is actually true is that these aliens landed there in Area 51, and they are kept there because they are so much fun. Everyone, uh, everyone there at the base is just hanging out with them, having a great time. They are, in fact, uh, Teletubbies-type creatures. Uh, three of them are gay, uh, the purple one is not. And uh, there's also a, a son who is a very old person who screams. Now, and hold on, hold on. This sounds very on, implausible Ru to me. Yeah, th this does sound plausible to you, Donatella? Uh, unfortunately not. I don't, I don't. Uh, I don't think I've read any studies about this. This sounds very implausible to me. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm not an epidemiologist like yourself, let alone a Nobel award-winning epidemiologist. But I, I, I've got to say, Ruth, I, you, you know, you you have made your your career as an anti or what is it a conspiracy theory debunker? Is that what you? Yeah, call mostly yourself? known as an anti anti vaxxer Yeah, well, it seems to me that the conspiracy theory that you have just debunked regarding the virus almost has nothing to do with the virus in well, any way, shape, or form. No, 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 this, no, 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 no. 
Now, what this has to do with is my location, which is I'm here, I'm frolicking oh. around with Tinky Winky, and I'm having a blast. But the reason I am here is because I'm trying to spread the word of the real truth. Uh, and you could do, go to my dark web handle, Ruth Truth, to find out more about this. I'm spreading the truth about this supposed coronavirus. And uh, the, you don't hear from these anti-vaxxers these days, now do you? No, nah, well, I guess that's true. You don't hear much from them at all, and you have to wonder what's going on with them. But what I got to yeah, ask, yeah. what I need to ask is, is what age demographic are these Teletubbies in? Are they in the vulnerable age demographic in any way? Is Tinky Winky, is he uh, Is he a are millennial t- going out there to bars? What's going on with these Teletubbies? No, they're just they frolicking. 18 plus, 18 plus. Wouldn't you like to know, sir? Well, man, I'm stuck inside, man. I'm quarantined, and I'm trying to enjoy, I'm trying to enjoy apocalypse, man. Well, I, I can tell you what you are. Uh, people have the wrong idea about this coronavirus. Now, people are saying that this thing started when some person in the Wuhan region of China uh, ate a, a, a bat. You heard this rumor? I uh, yeah, I believe I have. Yes, which yes. I find. I mean, I. I you all know about me. I yeah, find you that are a bat. We know that. You're a bat. It is incendiary. I, I, I find that absolutely outrageous that people would start blaming now people like me, a vampire, who can turn into bats. Yeah, right. Okay. I apologize. I, I called you a bat. You are, in fact, a vampire who can turn into bats. I, I just wanted to let you know that I, I am I'm very sorry for the mistake that I've made. You know, at this point, you know, forgiveness is key, and I forgive you, uh, Harrison. Thank you. But uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm sick and tired, you know. I'm sick and tired of people putting me down, pe- people like me down, because, uh, you know, all the, I can turn into a bat. Uh, you, you look at look at the entire history of vampires. What, is there ever any good press about us? Well, well, I actually have a piece of good news about bats. And All I don't right. know if you can uh, elaborate on, on this theory I've been working with about the coronavirus. Now, I think it is uh, treacherous and uh, villainous and uncouth to say that uh, coronavirus started because a person ate a bat. Now, what I will say is that coronavirus started when a bat ate a person. My God, Ruth. Now, that's a theory that I have not heard floated around yet. Yes, but, uh, and, and that bat... Uh, is now a uh, man bat of sir- sorts, and at day he fights crime, and at night he's a billionaire industrialist by the name of Woos Brain. Bru- bru- oh my God, Woos Bruce Brain. Brain. Woos Brain, the man bat. Now, hold on a second. This sounds fascinating. Well, we'll come back to this for more because yeah. this, these are theories that you've got, Ruth, and I, I respect you and I respect your theories. And, and well, hell, FW, I respect the hell out of you too, and you know that, my friend. But I want to talk to someone who is actually a scientist. I want to get a more scientific understanding of this. So Donatella Vegetables, uh, Professor, sorry, Donatella Vegetables, what what it make you of this theory of the man-bat theory? Hmm. Um, uh, it, it doesn't seem very likely to me. Uh, uh, I've, I've obviously been doing many, many press interviews, many uh, studies recently, many journal, journal articles about the uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, uh, very recently. It's been uh, very exhausting, frankly, not only as an epidemiologist, but also as a pervert. Uh, it's been extremely hard to uh, continue with my days as they are to do all of these interviews to talk to all these people about uh, a very serious subject not be able to unwind the way I like to do which is to get into a crowded uh, uh, subway carriage and just run my fingers through everybody's hair and mouths and lips and eyes so um, if you'll excuse me I'm feeling very stressed at the moment now this is something I can only imagine I can only imagine yeah people are not talking enough about the impact of this situation on uh our world's poivrets, uh, who are, and you know, this is the worst time in all of mankind's history to be uh, in the lifestyle, as you know, uh, swingers, for example. Oh, yeah, I was wondering what you meant by the lifestyle. I wasn't sure yeah, if you, you were don't talking know about some kind of, I was Tell talking some kind of prevert lifestyle. Tell me about it. This is, this is the absolute worst kind of apocalypse, okay, man? We're all quarantined, not allowed to be in groups more than two. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm sorry, Harrison. I am, you know, desperate. It's a family-friendly show, FW. I'm so sorry. 
I'm but, so sorry. Uh, you better be, and I, and I won't, I won't, uh, I won't tolerate no more of that filthy cussing of yours. Okay. Well, if you remember correctly, okay, if you remember correctly, my go bag was just a cooler full of beer. Okay? I do remember that. Yeah. Now I'm, I've been drinking beer alone in my apartment for the last two weeks. You call that fun? No, I was I, supposed to be relaxing on new waterfront property in Bozeman, Montana. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Well, you 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 were ahead of the curve, so to speak, on that waterfront property by a, by a couple hundred years, I imagine. Unfortunately, uh, we were supposed to be wiped out by by water. Okay? Yeah, well, we by, we may by, still we may still be friend. We may still be wiped out by water. And uh, that's not to I would take a quick moment to thank our sponsor of this show, Water, the Raw Water <laughs> uh, Company. Thanks for everything they do. They've just uh, recently opened a beautiful new headquarters in Wuhan, China. And uh, very happy, happy for all of them out there. Uh, but that's to be on the point where we have that's just a sponsor I'm happy to thank. And I've got a case full of their, uh, their water bottles right uh, in my basement now. But anyway, friend, I wanted to say I, 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 something you touched on just now, DFW, that I'm very proud about is that you said you've been quarantined now for two weeks. That's a long time to be quarantining, isn't it, friend? Well, it certainly is, man. I got put on my ass by a virus two weeks ago. So you got sick. You got the coronavirus. Yeah, man. I go around sucking all sorts of blood, okay? <laughs> Well, uh, well. Uh, uh, first of all, maybe this is a good opportunity to, as any to talk about it because I didn't realize that you yourself had been uh, sick and contaminated by this virus. Can you describe for us your experience? What are the symptoms that you've been feeling? Um, can I just tell you, man? I went through the whole a whole slew of symptoms. Okay, man, all the ones that they're talking about: dry cough, chest pain, trouble breathing, terrible headache. Loss of smell and taste. Are my you fucking God. kidding me? My yeah. God. And my skin, I'm a, I'm, my skin just turned bright red. I was working on a tan. My God. That that sounds like it must have been a very excruciating circumstance. And uh, Oh, and there's oh. that cough right there. <laughs> very happy. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm fucking telling you, man. Very happy we're recording this from... Different parts of the world right now, I'll tell you that much. But I don't see people anyway. I live alone. I live out in an undisclosed location, coordinates uh, to be disclosed only to private uh, friends and and others uh, of uh, different kinds of relations that I have. And uh, and you guys, my friends, you will you you will never know where I am. You'll never uh, listeners of the show. Uh, they'll never find me, even if I die. That's all I can promise you. I'll never be found. But I am safe, and that's all that matters, and I'm broadcasting to you. And and so you, you've been experiencing symptoms. Uh, uh, Professor, uh, I want to know, and, and, and Ruth, feel free to jump in on this too. Professor, What are, are there some other symptoms uh, of this disease that we have not yet even begun to reckon with? Uh, bad personality uh, traits um, can be an indicator. Um a uh, husky voice. Um, it is not yet known whether it can be transmitted through through directly sucking the blood of someone infected with, with coronavirus, but it certainly wouldn't help to have your slimy mouth on another person. Now, when you say bad personality traits, uh, what what specifically are we talking about? Scientifically, scientifically bad personality traits. You Sorry, know, the, I, the I need to interrupt. Are you saying bad personality traits or bad personality traits? <laughs> Because it seems as though we, we have our, we have a number of instances in which it seems that bat personalities <laughs> now, bat, are actually bat personality traits might include uh, radar or sonar <laughs> I forget which one and, and I guess flopping echolocation, around echolocation I believe is the te- uh, the technical term is echolocation it's echolocation okay. Um. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's I no I... information at this point to suggest that echolocation is not a symptom of coronavirus. Okay, that's uh, good. Because I hear some echo in this video conferencing. I hear that too. And, and when I first heard that echolocation was a symptom, I thought that meant that people were going out to echo stores, as in Mark Echo's fashion line, Mark, you know, Echo, E C K O. And they were going out to echo locations and they were getting all of the clothing from Echo, which is a company I believe still exists and was not maybe just an early 2000s fashion trend in the United States of America. If if anybody's still going out to echo locations to rock that fire drip, man, they are way out of touch. Okay, yeah, I anyway. know what's going on. Now, anyway, is it t- mostly people who are out of touch that are getting this coronavirus? 
And I gotta ask, before you answer that, uh, Donatella, Harrison, this episode is being released soon before the death toll gets any higher, right? <laughs> well, friend, uh, yes. That's good. That's good to know. <laughs> why, do you, why do you ask? I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not just sure. Just wondering how uh, the impact of my voice will, uh, you know, echo, so to speak, through uh, time in memoriam. If you're wondering, and I just heard someone coughing in the background there, and that that's uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry, that's Lala. <laughs> Lala, okay, Lala. Well, hello to you, Lala. Is Lala a friend or it's a it's a Teletubby alien? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You don't right. know the song, hey, Lala. <laughs> Lala. Yeah, I remember now. Tinky Winky and Poe. Yeah, Dipsy and D- Dipsy and Poe. Uh, but I love that Poe. Uh, Anyway, uh, what was your question for for Professor Vegetables there? I forget already. <laughs> it's already I'm is not, that a I'm, symptom? <laughs> uh, I, I said that bad and bad personality traits. Uh, lack of listening is also a bad personality trait. You have to excuse me one moment. I need to. Uh... <gasps> <laughs> now this sound that we just heard. Um, how would you venture to describe it? Uh, the sound that I just heard, uh, coming through Professor Vegetable's side of the conversation, uh, I can only, uh, describe it as maybe the possible release of, uh, anxiety and stress about how this phone call is going, uh, but at the same time, I, I just pray to, pray to the Lord above who's looking over all of us right now that, that that was not a, some kind of symptom of a, of a, of a bat scream, so to speak, or a high pitched wail that a bat might make when it's roosting. Now, uh, I'm fine. Thank you very much for your patience there. It was a problem with the line. Uh, sometimes, uh, my connection makes loud, loud wails of an- anguish. Good to know. Uh, if, uh, if the connection drops, I'm, I apologize for that sincerely. I have a. So you're so hold on. You're you're saying your connection makes screaming noises every time it disconnects from the the connection. Um, unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately. Well, oh, by God, I hope we don't get disconnected. <laughs> I have a I have a better yeah, question uh, actually. Um, now, you have a better question than my question. No, friend? better than the one I forgot. Uh, okay. I, I I'm suppose. Listening. Uh, now, uh, Donatella, how are you coping not being able to rub up against all the people in this situation? Are you rubbing up, up against uh, household items or uh, pictures of people or your computer screen? Uh, I, I'm coping uh, terribly. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, I, my pleasure. Uh, the, the, one of the issues is that my other way of relieving stress is to um, sell uh, drugs to people. Um, and... <laughs> Unfortunately, that is much harder now that I cannot, uh, I cannot as easily access people. Um, it's it's harder to keep it to groups of of two. Um, it's uh, it's it's a shit show. Um, I. I'm, I've tried rubbing up against mannequins instead. I keep a lot of mannequins in my apartment uh, just in case, but unfortunately, it doesn't have the same uh, moisture of a human being. Um, it's. It's really tragic. Now you could uh, probably moisten up these mannequins with something like uh, a disinfectant spray or something like that. I hadn't actually considered this. This could be. I beforehand, I've I've just used lots of kettles to create vapor around the mannequin, um, a bit like Ferris Bueller in the beginning of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's a good trick. Um, uh, 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 but you still don't really get the same sensation of, of a stranger's body. Heat. Now, I've been hearing some rumors about people doing uh, Ferris Bueller-type hoaxes, uh, pretending they have coronavirus so they can, you know, ride their friend's fancy dad's car uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I'll tell you what, yes, this is real. This is very real. Uh, I've experienced this exact Ferris Bueller syndrome, I'll call it, uh, myself. Uh, just the other day, I was calling. Uh, uh, yeah, as, as I mentioned before, I live in an undisclosed location. Let's be honest, though. It's a rural location. There's, that should be no surprise to anybody. So I'm out here. I'm in a, in a countryside location. And I need a little help around the farm every now and then around the property. And so my, my I've always employed my, my cousin, Hank, uh, who's a, 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 a younger gentleman than I. 
Uh, in fact, uh, he's a very young gentleman, but he's my cousin. He, we're actually like 60 years apart. But you know how weird it gets sometimes with cousins, right? Where it's like you don't know how do you, what is a first cousin and what's a second cousin. You, you know, it's confusion. But what I'm basically trying to, to get at is is that I, he was supposed to help me, and I called him up, and I could he he was trying to do the cough keyboard thing from Ferris Bueller, you know the oh, yeah. the different coughs coming on the keyboard, but he forgot that it wasn't set on the cough, and so he was basically playing me Beethoven's Fifth on his computer, just hitting random keys and stuff, and I'm like, I'm Hank. You're playing me music, and he's like, "Oh no, I'm I'm sick." And then it'd be like, bum, 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 bum. you know. So that's the Ode to Joy, not the Fifth in it, anyway. <laughs> well, I do believe we all need some Ode to Joy in these troubling times. I agree. I agree. Uh, also, the theme song of the European Union. And you know what? We need also this this virus is a poison. We also need an antidote to joy, if you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying, and it's very very helpful. Uh, Thank you. Now uh, you're talking about a vaccine. <laughs> what? Uh, no, no. I, I I believe I heard an antidote to joy that would be a vaccine. Well, I I don't know about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> But maybe you, maybe that's what they call it in the epidemiology world. But I call it an antinode, antinode, anti anti ode. I, I think uh, I mean bad personality traits could be an antidote to joy for sure. That very well. That, that's very possible. You spend a lot of time indoors. You hide in. You sleep forever. You live for centuries. That sounds like an antidote for joy. Uh, Fw. Well, you know, this whole this whole this whole thing is an antidote to joy. Okay, all right. No, 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 no matter how much Beethoven you can pump through your speakers out of your balconies, it's not gonna get me out uh, hanging out spring break with all of my friends. And believe me, there's more than just one of them, and I'd very much like to hang out with all of them. Now, are okay? you friends with a lot of these folks hanging out down in, in spring break right now, down in, uh, in Florida and other other places of vacation towns and stuff? Well, I, I certainly call them one of my tribe, okay? You know, we get along. We speak uh, the same Is language, if you will. Well, uh, uh, it, we we tend to find each other through echolocation, okay? Um, it's an app that we can get on our phone, too. Really? And, yeah. So you're telling me yeah. all the people that are out spreading this virus right now are actually able to be tracked on an app? Because they're all vampires? <laughs> yeah, well, Now, this okay. is a real breakthrough. Right. You, this perfectly you fits are, with my man bat theory. Yeah, well, I got to tell you... Um, um, <laughs> what's your name again? Me? I'm Ruth Hader Sandberg. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Uh, Come on, I gotta tell you, Ruth, you're not far off the mark. Okay, there was a guy. His his, his name I will not patient reveal, zero. even though you're very. Yes, patient zero. Okay, he's actually a vampire. Okay, and he got he got into a fight. Well, I'm sorry. He actually was breaking up a fight between a bat. And a pangolin. A pangolin? Okay? Yes, yeah, a pangolin. A pangolin? A pangolin. Now, is that some kind of musical instrument there, friend? No, it's kind of like an armadillo, but it's it's different. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the, bat, the bat world and the pangolin world, they have a long-standing feud. Uh, my friend, my buddy, he got in the middle of one of these, these little scuffles, and uh, uh, he ended up... Uh, Getting a little bit of blood on on from both of them, and they mixed in in a single bite of his, and uh, he thought nothing of it, and um, he is patient zero, but he is um, I can tell you he was he is not Chinese, he's not from Wuhan, uh, the the feud the scuffle did happen there. Uh, he is a good friend of mine. He is a millionaire. He's a billionaire. Okay, well, you know, and, uh, I'm going to stop you there because we don't want to <laughs> reveal the identity of this individual because, uh, as I mentioned before, our great hosts, uh, uh, the Berlin Open Stage Show, and their great, their great sponsor, Water, 
Uh, uh, it is, it is, it is majority owned by a billionaire industrialist Wu's brain, I believe. Uh, I believe so, and, and I believe we're not legally allowed to get into too much of this stuff because uh, because I'm not now, revealing any I'm names. Not, not, yeah. not beholden to water company like y'all are. I I uh, Ruth 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 Hader Sandberg can't be bought. Yeah, can't be bought. I'm 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 uh, independently wealthy, and I I I can hide out wherever I want. Now, what I will say is that I believe that someone out there can stop this uh, Wu's brain. And uh, it could be the Roker, Al Roker, the Roker. Al Roker, Al Roker. <laughs> I mean, if anyone can do it, it's got to be the Roker. So, I mean, this guy uh, has lost a wild amount of weight for his role. Yeah. Yeah, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Ruth, you're not far off the mark. There is an ancient wisdom among vampires that says something very similar in the folklore. And uh, uh, it, it, in order for it to happen, he's he's got to put that weight he's back gotta on. He's got to put it back on? Wow, it's so, oh, wow. Uh, okay, well, he's, he's got to put that weight back on. He, uh, he's got to stop yeah, doing uh, morning television and moving to the evening. He's got to go back to doing the yeah. weather. And and this this could really help us at this troubling times. And I'm just looking for more anti uh, mad bat heroes to step forward. Well, I, a- I tell you what, I, I think that that's an interesting theory, and, I, and I'm, I'm I'm very happy now to to take this moment to brainstorm some of the other individuals because I I believe in Al Roker, I really do. I I watch him every day on, on Good Morning America. And I, and I love him. And, I, and I've always loved him, even when he was doing more of the weather-related stuff, which I always found to be fun because he made the weather fun, you know, and I think that was what I loved about him. But who are some other people out there that we might be able to to tap on now in this moment of crisis in order to stop that woo sprain out there? I mean, one person comes to mind, and of course, uh, you might laugh at me. You might laugh because is a is a is a person who's used to performing musicals and and I want to say the 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 fiddler right now you know the fiddler on the roof I, I think he he could be out there and, and he could be stopping people with his fiddle well, yeah I think he could very very well to, uh, team up with another poison who has uh, been known to perform musical and that is the midler the midler <laughs> bat midler. Already known to be a scourge of uh, every person in authority in our Twitter account, she could really take down this billionaire industrialist. I love that. It's actually uh, it's actually been reported um, in some uh, scientific journals that uh, specifically small um, uh, Antarctic water, uh, marine birds could also be uh, a way of uh, they could hold the cure to this particular illness, um, particularly. Uh, uh, puffins and penguins uh, could also penguins? be um, useful in this fight. Pe- penguins uh, are, are you not saying birds. Pangolins, not penguins. <laughs> okay, penguins, penguins. I agree. I, uh, and, uh, I got. Know- um, I have a, an. Uh, I have two aunts, uh, lesbian aunts, and. Uh, um, Congratulations! Uh, aunt, yeah, aunt aunt Cher and Ro Cher Ro. Um, uh, <laughs> they could help. Wait, you have to say that again. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I just uh, there was a, maybe some uh, confusion over the line, and I didn't quite understand who these people were. One more time, uh, friend. Uh, they're they're my aunts, um, Cher and Ro. Cher Ro. Uh, I call them affectionately Cher Ro. Uh, and uh, both of them together, <laughs> they they're quite scary. Uh, uh, now, do you know what I mean? I think I understand now. Uh, I'm maybe. Still, I'm still do in they the wear dark. do they wear bags over their heads? <laughs> Oh! Are you still in the dark over there? <laughs> I, I, I'm following now. I believe uh, we need to think like the man bad, uh, and we need to uh, find someone who also is able to move around stealthily, kind of in a in a dexterous way, and uh, maybe also wear uh, a leather outfit and kind of uh, you know uh, have these reflexes that are, are strong. So I'm hoping that the dog man can get in on this. Dogman is very, very scary, and he can really, you know, do some damage. Terrifying. Now, I just want to say that one thing that has been concerning in all this, because I believe that these people have the power to help us right now. I, I really do, and I think there are more, and we'll, we'll probably name them as we uh, as we realize who they are at this time. You don't think we brought but, uh, out? I want to say that. 
I know we definitely haven't run out of heroes at this moment. But what I wanted to say was that one thing that concerns me very much is is people who are maybe downplaying the crisis and 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 I want to Mr. Freeze himself, all right? And uh, Mr. Freeze himself, I want to talk about that. Mr. Freeze has been sending uh, sending out videos of him sitting in a hot tub telling people to stay home and you know you know how Mr. Freeze talks. Mr. Freeze is going, you know, stay at home and um, look at me with my my donkeys. I'm at home and it, that's how Mr. Freeze, a villain, a true villain is talking right now. <laughs> That's true. He's a he's a he's a real villain, this guy, and and I, I you know I really I really want to know like when how many people does he think are expandable to die because of this crisis before he stops torturing oh, us I, with these videos? Yeah, and then on the other side of things, you've got you've got Danny DeVito, you know this Mister Penguin guy himself, and and he's over there and he's saying stay at home too. So who do we trust? You know these days. That's true. The heroes are the villains have become heroes, if you ask me. That's true. That's true. It's a topsy turvy world, man. Up is down, down is up. Who knows what it is? Tide goes in, tide goes out. Can't explain it. You can't. And uh, there's never a miscommunication, friend. There's never a miscommunication. Uh, and one thing I want to get, just maybe because uh, we're running out of time here, it seems, and uh, I wanted to just wrap things up. So, FW, what, what what do you have? Do you have plans for the future? Anything you you're looking forward to, or efforts you're going to be making to help uh, help people out there? Remember, you're talking to the the audience here, the Berlin Open Stage Show. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I've been uh, patrolling um, my streets um, from my balcony, and I I will turn into a flock of bats. Um, if I do see any groups larger than two, um, and I, I'm just hoping that people obey the uh, the ordinances so that we can get over this thing, and I can go out and enjoy my my time, uh, my eternal time, shall we say? Okay, uh, uh, outside at the beach with some hot babes. <laughs> All right, this sounds quite. Now, ir- when you say hot, uh, hot babes, what kind of uh, people are you talking about? Well, uh, <laughs> not sure what the insinuation there is, Ruth, um, but I- I'm talking about spring breakers. I'm talking about uh, spring uh, any, break. you know, like like the movie. <laughs> yeah, Spr- exactly. Spring break. Uh, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, uh, James Franco, uh, a very well known vampire in the vampire community. Also, very well known pervert. <laughs> yes, well, I mean. The and Venn I'm diagram. sure he's an anti-vaxxer if you get down to the truth of it as well. <laughs> the Venn diagram of perverts and, va- and 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 vampires is basically a circle. Okay, uh, we're we're loud and proud, and we'll we'll do anything, even extraterrestrial. Oh, you got that, Ruth? Wow, wow! You'll do you you'll have sex with the Teletubbies? Is that what you're saying? Hey, man. Who? Who knows what might happen? Okay, maybe maybe the result of that is the antidote. To uh, to coronavirus. Wow, wow. That, I have to research that theory. Well, it's uh, not. It's actually Al Roker <laughs> gaining weight and doing <laughs> doing the weather very well. And uh, just to keep things moving along, uh, uh, Professor Vegetables, uh, uh, what what kind of uh, work are you doing right now to to, to help uh, solve this crisis? And what can what do you have to look forward to in the future? Um, the answer to both is uh, very small, independent podcasts. Um, uh, that's that's uh, unfortunately the the main way that I'm combating the virus currently. Uh, all of the main epidemiologists are uh, already already booked up um, on all of the big networks. So um, it's it's this and staying inside of my home with my mannequins until I can finally be released onto the streets again. I'm looking forward to more or less a land-based version of what FW is envisaging for after all of this. Well, it sounds terrifying if you ask me. Uh, and and Ruth over there, what uh, what uh, what about you? Anything? Well, uh, do you have a spe- specific question for me or? or? Yeah, what uh, what are you looking oh, forward to? What's well, going on? Well, what I always you, look forward you know? to life. I am a survivor. I have uh, gotten out of many uh, traps that have been set for me by various cults and uh, shadowy organizations. Uh, and I will say, there's a lot of disinformation floating about uh, around out there, and we're all going to be fine. We're all going to get out of this safe 
and we're all going to be feeling a lot better about the world. One crazy conspiracy theory out there that uh, I want to debunk while I have you is that this virus was in fact caused by Corona beer. And I think that is ludicrous, preposterous, and absolutely disgusting to say that Corona beer caused this when in fact, I know for a fact, that it was, was Dos Equis, that the most interesting man in the world has been going around and uh, spreading coronavirus himself, telling people to stay thirsty when he knows that going out there and, and getting uh, these Dos Equis from the store is actually infecting people. Well, you know what, Ruth? That's as good a theory as I've ever heard. You know, a lot of people making jokes about Modelo. A lot of people making jokes about Tecate. A lot of people making uh, all kinds of jokes about Pacifico. But I have yet to hear anyone make a joke, not a joke, a serious not theory a joke. around the Dos I, I don't want to hear joke. any jokes about these people. I'm saying that the most interesting man in the world needs to be stopped. And he needs to be killed on site. I'm putting the message out there. I, I don't care if Man Bad has to join forces with Al Roco to do it. We got to stop this man because he's out there. He's I agree. infecting I think, people. I agree. I agree. And and you know what? Uh, uh, I wouldn't be, I'd be lying if I said this Dos Equis guy doesn't sound a little two-faced, if you know what oh, I mean. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I'd like this. to put a dent in his career. Yeah, yeah, they talk about that, Harvey. That's the name of my dog. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, just yelling at my dog over there. Uh, and uh, anyway, I, I, that I think brings us to the end of this this show. Unless anyone has anything else to add last minute before I give us a give a nice little send off uh, another story from Lake Nuclear. No, no, go ahead. My Wi-Fi is going to scream again, so I would I would leave it there. Okay, so then uh, I, I think I'll wrap yeah. it up with another family friendly story. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go have sex with Poe now, the only non gay Teletubby. <laughs> no, sorry, Tinky Winky. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Tinky Winky is the yeah, only yeah. non gay Teletubby? Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Anyway, uh, I'm queuing the music up right now, as you could probably tell, because uh, you're hearing it. And I'll be giving us another story now and. I'll take us to uh, a little place we haven't visited much in nuclear these days, and that's the post office. So uh, we're opening, we're in the post office, and things are as busy as can be. Mail is going in all the mailboxes, and people are touching the mail with their bare hands, as it's supposed to be in Lake Nuclear. And we've got Hank, the mailman, who's sorting through mail, and he's looking at all the addresses of the people he knows. And, oh, there's Mary Gallagher there, and she lives at 123 Main Street, and Oh, there's Jim Gallagher there, her, her uh, loyal and faithful husband, also at 123 Main Street. And then there's a another letter there for little Timmy Gallagher, uh, also at 123 Main Street. And Hank, he's just looking at the mail, and he's thinking to himself, well, golly gee, ain't it nice to be alive in a town where all three members of a household are still getting mail. And I'm happy to be here in the town of Lake Nuclear, Another day to live to see the mail continue. And the mail will continue until there is no more mail. And anyway, folks, that's just been another story from Lake Nuclear. I've been your host, Harrison Fielder. I want to thank all my guests today. I want to thank Professor Donatella Vegetables, the epidemiologist who made me come more comfortable with how this disease is going, as well as knowing that she is currently not on the streets harassing people. And I want to thank uh, another guest, Ruth Hader Sandberg. Thank you so much. Your theories have helped me find comfort in the fact that I can't trust anything that I read anymore and nothing is true. And I want to thank last and foremost, F.W. Parkinson for illuminating us on the truth behind what it's like to be a bat in all this time or a vampire. I'm sorry. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you very much to, uh, to, to the host of the Berlin Open Stage Show for letting me host another episode and I, I have to thank a few people I have to thank uh, uh, Josie Parkinson and Noah Telson not quite sure what them fellas or non-fellas ladies did for the show uh, but uh, I thank you anyway and uh, tune in next time and see you around
Thanks for listening to The Boss, the Berlin Open Stage Show. The Boss is produced by Stainer Janssen and Trevor Silverstein and is released in partnership with Bear Radio. You can find this and other shows at bearradio.org. New episodes are recorded live every Thursday at 11 p.m. at the Comedy Cafe Berlin. Entry is free, so join us for the live experience. Also, a special thanks to Banglist for our theme song, and once more, to Comedy Cafe Berlin. The Boss is available wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to subscribe and maybe even leave a review. Interested in sponsoring The Boss? Write to us at podcasttheboss at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening and see you next time at the Berlin Open Stage Show.